Hello everyone, today I'm going to be reacting to Wuthering Waves is a better game than Genshin Impact and the reasons why. So, let's begin. Wuthering Waves is a better game than Genshin Impact. Yup, I said what I said. And in this video, I'm going to tell you all the reasons why I think that is. Now, before anybody comes okay. from, which I realize is going to happen anyway, I want yeah. you to know that I have played both games extensively, and I've spent over three times as much money in Genshin Impact than I have in Wuthering Waves. I have my Raiden Shogun at C2, and I don't care how bad the meta is for freeze teams, Kamisato Ayaka will always have a special place in my heart. But I respect that. She is so pretty. Today, I want to tell you about all the things that I can come up with where Genshin Impact just quite honestly falls short when compared with Wuthering Waves. And if your first response back to me is something about the sensory tower revenue reports, just go ahead and stop because I don't take into account how much money a gacha game has bamboozled players into spending in what for all of them are very predatory pricing models. I'm not taking into account any of that as far as the quality of any individual game. But okay. Hey, first, if you're new here on my channel, what's up? I'm Solus, and I make Hi, videos about gotcha games. Guides, news, just whatever I feel like making. So if that sounds like your cup of tea, please consider hitting the subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. All right, now let's get into today's video. The All first right. thing on my list is going to be how generous the developers are for Weathering Waves and how that impacts the new player experience. Yep, I, I agree. Yep, I agree. When you first play Genshin Impact, you barely get any rewards. But when you start playing Wuthering Waves, the amount of rewards you get is so high. It is much higher. New player experience is going to be significantly better than it is for Genshin Impact for one simple reason. And that yep. reason is Wuthering Waves gives you three free five-star characters from the standard banner. As well as yep. something like 30 pulls, 30 free pulls for the limited banner, if I remember right. Now, Genshin Impact just recently did a thing where you can also get a five-star character of your choice from the standard banner, but it's only a single character, and it took them over four years to add this to the game. And they... Yeah, this is... Yeah, this is a really bad... Yeah, so this is a really bad sign for Genshin. It took them almost f four years to actually implement that feature to get a standard five-star character of your choice. I think I think the only reason why they are doing this is because Wuthering Waves is surpassing Genshin. Is surpassing Genshin. And you're probably scared right now. So yeah. That's my reasoning as to why they did that. They didn't do it because they care. They only did it because of Wuthering Waves. That's it. Ever give out free ten bulls. The main part of having fun in any gacha game is being able to play with characters that you like. And yep. Wuthering Waves allows you to do that from the very beginning of the game. So, Wuthering Waves released a feature to where you can... So, Wuthering Waves allows you to get a free 5 star at the beginning. At the very beginning. Genshin doesn't do that, if you really think about it games has honestly been so generous with what they've given us in Wuthering Waves that it's actually had like some kind of reverse psychology effect on me where I've actually ended up spending more money in the game than I would have otherwise. And See? That's what I said in my previous video. That's what I said in my previous video. If you are showing respect, kindness, care, and respecting people's time, then people are going to spend money on your game because it shows that that you are truly committed to providing people with content that is meaningful so that is meaningful and people are happy and that's a perfect segue into my next point which is the character and weapon banners oh this i know now, Genshin Impact just recently introduced a change, coincidentally, not long after Wuthering Waves came out, that made their character and weapon banners a little bit better. But the crazy thing is, is that even with the new changes, the banners still absolutely suck. Yeah. Now, um, they did this change. It's so small, by the way, where instead of getting two fate points just to get the weapon that you want, now it's one fate point. Now it's one fate point. I still think it's still trash, to be honest. Just uh, your favorite, the, the weapon you want to get is tied to 
fate point to one fate point, which I don't like. But in Weathering Waves, the weapon that you want to get is not tied to anything. And you are guaranteed to get the weapon that you want, the limited weapon, without, without having to go through a fate point. So yeah, the, the weapon banner in Weathering Waves is better. And compared with the Weathering Waves banners. In Wuthering Waves, the hard pity for a five-star character is 80 pulls. And for me, usually I get a five-star character sometime before 80 pulls, like usually in the soft pity, which I think is around 69. Okay. Which is a uh, nice, even number. But the biggest thing personally for me is that the limited weapon banners are guaranteed. They are guaranteed at 80 pity. So that means no 50-50, no other unwanted weapons. You are getting the weapon that you want at or before 80 pulls every yep. single time. And look, I know full well that gotcha games in general are just a major ripoff, but these are the best and most generous banners that you're going to find in any gotcha game that's out right now. And by definition... I agree. I don't think any other gotcha game does that. And this also makes Wuthering Waves more free-to-play friendly. It's just an L for Genshin all the way around. Now, I'm going to have to break up this next part into several subcategories. Okay. Let's go through and see how Wuthering Waves and Genshin Impact compare in terms of content and gameplay. So, first thing I want to talk about is combat. Don't get me okay. wrong. I enjoy Genshin's combat very much. Genshin's elemental reaction system is super cool, and it is really fun. I but agree. That is kind of all you get. The game is easy, and once you learn the elemental reactions, that's it. Enemies and bosses and mobs are just sponges for damage numbers, and you can just mindlessly grind it away. In Wuthering Waves, you have dodges, counterattacks, yep. yep. intro and outro skills, and a stagger bar for enemies. Yep. Genshin does not have any of this. But in Wuthering Waves, you can dodge. But in Genshin, you can't dodge. You can't do any counterattacks in Genshin. All of those elements in Wuthering Waves make the combat feel way more dynamic in every single fight. You sometimes actually have to think, and I know that can be a scary word, but trust me, it's worth it. So mm -hmm. while I do acknowledge that it is possible for somebody to enjoy Genshin Impact's combat more, if anyone is to try and say that Genshin Impact's combat is just objectively better, that is just false. You can say that it is easier or that you enjoy it more, but that's about it. Okay. I agree. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, because remember, Genshin Impact and Wuthering Waves, they both meant to have different combat systems. They're, they're not meant to have the exact same. Now, let's move on to world exploration. This is an area where Wuthering Waves absolutely blows Genshin Impact out of the water. You yep. Know, the stupid. This is so annoying. It annoys the hell out of me and annoying stamina bar that you have in Genshin Impact that runs out after like 10 feet of sprinting. Yep. In Wuthering Waves, you can sprint. Yeah, so in Genshin, you have to... So in Genshin, you have to level up the Statue of the Seven to gain more stamina. But... And if you run in Genshin, your stamina drains. But in Wuthering Waves, you don't do that. In Wuthering Waves, you can literally run without having to worry about your stamina being consumed. Your heart's content with no stamina bar. You can also run up walls, double jump, and there's a grapple. Also, yep. in the Wuthering Waves live stream for version 1.3, we just learned that they're adding even more quality of life and ways for world traversal when Black mm -hmm. Shores releases. I literally feel so cringe now every single time that I'm playing Genshin and I run out of stamina while climbing a wall at the same pace yep. that Joe Biden unsuccessfully <laughs> up a flight of stairs and also in the same vein as world exploration is mining now this is one of those really small things but in my opinion all of these small things do start to add up but in genshin impact when you're mining with any character that doesn't have a claymore it feels like you are chiseling away at mount everest with a toothpick but in weathering waves pretty much any character can break rocks with relative ease yep and in genshin you have to use a claymore to break rocks and collect those rocks as materials. But in Wuthering Waves, you can lose any character and it will break. And any character you use will break rocks and you can collect them as materials. So, yeah, that's a lot better.
Ali, for example, can break rocks with one hit, and most of the other characters, with the exception of Rectifier users, can break them pretty quickly as well. Okay, so next up on my list is endgame content. If you yep. hit the end game in Genshin, you probably know that the end game just consists of basically you just keep leveling your characters, grind yep. artifacts, yep. do your spiral abyss, yep. and then you log back in for real when there's an actual story update. Now, yeah, that's all that Genshin offers. They don't offer anything, anything else, to be honest. No, they added that new mode recently. Again, coincidentally, not long after Wuthering Waves came out. But it's only one more mode, and it's not that great. Now, in Wuthering... Yep. I saw this new feature for the Spiral Abyss, and it's not that good. I'm going to say, it's not that good. It's not going to make much of a difference. It can be a wasted feature if the player is unable to um, complete Stage 11. For example, just so they can collect uh, the other rewards from previous stages. So yeah, it, it's not. So in my opinion, it doesn't make much of a difference. Waves. You have the Tower of Adversity, the Elusive Realm, and yep. the Grand Bosses. The Tower of Adversity could admittedly use some changes. It offers but that's basically more. Basically, Spiral Abyss equivalent. The Elusive Realm is a roguelike mode, and honestly, in my opinion, it is absolutely incredible. And they add updates to it with every new iteration that just continuously keep making it better. The hologram bosses, though, I think are the best part of the game. For anyone who wants it, they essentially just provide a tough challenge, which is something that just quite literally doesn't exist in Genshin. And part of the... Yep. I fought those bosses in Wuthering Waves, and let me tell you, they are really hard. They are really hard to beat. Genshin does not do this. But Wuthering, so if you're facing these bosses, be extremely careful when you're fighting these bosses. Otherwise, you're going to get hit and then you'll die. So be extremely careful and cautious. Fun for the hologram bosses is actually just re-clearing them with different teams and different characters just to see what you can do. And considering that Wuthering Waves just came out a few months ago, I would anticipate that there's going to be even more in-game content coming in the future. Now, I can go either way on this, but sometimes, sometimes I don't want to read the story, and sometimes I just want to get back into the action. Well, that's me also. Guess what Wuthering Waves has that Genshin Impact does not. If you guessed a story skip button, you would be correct. There it is. There it is. There it is. This is something that Genshin players have been asking for so long, and we never got it. But Wuthering Waves has that feature, so we're good. Genshin players, myself included, have been asking for this for years. But in Wuthering Waves, if you're not in the mood to read, you don't have to. Simple as that. Yep. And in version 1.3 of Wuthering Waves, they are adding a new feature where when you do skip the dialogue, it's still going to give you a summary of what it is that you skipped so that you know what you missed. Huge W from Kuro Games. Okay. I agree. It can sometimes be very boring to listen to the dialogues, so you want to skip over to them but you can't do that in genshin in genshin you have to constantly skip the dialogues until the until the dialogues are over and then you can move into action but in wuthering waves you can literally skip the dialogues completely and then go into action so yeah this is a great feature for players that don't really care about the story much and just want to to and just want to fight in combat so next let's talk about the ecosystem in wuthering waves versus oh the system in genshin impact there's really now this is something that i notice as well but i'm gonna let him explain not a whole lot to say with this comparison literally just everything about the ecosystem in wuthering waves is better than the artifact system in genshin impact in genshin it is an endless grind and at the end of that endless grind you probably uh -huh. still won't have an artifact with the correct main stat that you want now i right. did just add a new mechanic where you can get an artifact with the main stat that you want but it takes months to do it for just one artifact and then your substats are probably still gonna roll like shit. yep i can only imagine the pain when you experience that you you wait for months to get a 
to get an artifact, like for example, a circlet with crit rate main stat as your main stat, and then crit damage and attack percent as your substats, you get it, and then you max it out to level 20, and then all of it just rolls to flat attack. How painful can that be? Othering Waves, on the other hand, incorporates open world exploration into its ecosystem, and there are game mechanics to where you can pretty regularly get these items called malleable echoes, which yep. allow you to choose an echo with the main stat of your choice. This is much better. I, I swear, it's much better. And the fact that you can use your echoes in combat adds an entire extra layer of complexity. Like I said, there's really not a whole lot to compare here when talking about which system is better. And now Yep. I love using uh, the echo system where in combat, where in combat, you can literally summon your echo to attack the enemy. And that's what I like. It brings more entertainment, in my opinion. In my opinion, it brings more entertainment, more, more joy. Oh, let's just talk about the devs. One thing that really stands out about Wuthering Waves is how quickly Kuro Games responds to feedback. And they're yep. Genshin does not do this. Genshin does not respond to feedback. They ignore feedback. They ignore feedbacks all the time. But but Curl Games does not. They do not ignore feedbacks. They acknowledge the feedbacks and then they incorporate those feedbacks into uh, new updates. And th and that is incredible, to be honest. That is so incredible. To, because it shows that Curl Games truly does care for the players. They, un they care about your time, your energy, and all those other things. So, yeah. That's all I can say. Kind of doing that out of necessity, if you think about it, right? Because they know, and every other game developer knows, that they will not be able to get away with what Genshin Impact has done over the last four years. Genshin is a special case, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But moving forward, the open world gotcha space is expanding. And in order to compete for your game time and your money, the devs have to do better than the Genshin devs. <laughs> Which, admittedly, yep. is not hard to do at all. All right, it's so not really if you hard. enjoyed this video or found it interesting, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss out on my future gotcha content. Thanks for listening to me, Yap. Later. Excellent video. Excellent video. Honestly, it's an excellent video. I truly wish well for Wuthering Waves, to be honest. And if Wuthering Waves keeps getting better and better and better i can only imagine how hoyaverse will feel when they will they have already lost so many players and all those players have moved to weathering waves i can only imagine the pain that they will have to go through but again that's something that they have caused to be honest but yeah, uh, let me know in the comments, what do you think? And again, am I, and I also think that Wuthering Waves is much better than Genshin. But let me know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts. Do you agree with Solace? And if you do, or if you have a different opinion, let me know in the comments. I would love to read your comments. And until then... I will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.